So volume resistivity, shielding effectiveness, lap shear strength, and peel strength are the key properties that most people will test for or design around in order to validate a program requirement. Um, each of them typically has a different test procedure and often an industry spec surrounding it, such as IEEE, ASTM, or a military specification. So this slide shows a few of the different electrical tests that can be done on compounds, including transfer impedance and volume resistivity. On the left side of the slide, you'll see the SAE setup for transfer impedance that actually applies beads of adhesive along an aluminum test plate or a couple beads of sealant along two outside arcs on those same test plates. Um, volume resistivity on the right side um, is measured using one of a couple different ASTM specifications. So this is actually the standard IEEE um, shielding effectiveness test where the conductive compound is dispensed on a metal plate um, in between uh, two shielded rooms. So Comerix does have test facilities um, and we have a number of shielded rooms where we perform not only testing on our own materials, but also the overall systems um, and EMI testing for our customers' electronic systems. Uh, the left shows a standard frame test and the right shows a slot test. Um, each of these tests can be run along the entire frequency spectrum. So from the kilohertz range, all the way up to 18 gigahertz, and in some cases, even 100 gigahertz for uh, military qualification. It's also important to note that these tests are run before and after environmental exposure to get an understanding of how the materials will perform. Thanks, Ben. And really one last note on that slide, um, the, the slot material evaluation is um, more of a material evaluation versus where the frame test is more of an application specific test and can give you higher shielding values. Thanks. So mechanical testing actually uses the adhesives and sealants attached to a couple different aluminum test panels that are pulled apart until the breaking point. Um, and that's per the specific test procedure. The force that's recorded um, at that break is measured and then um, recorded as the lap shear force. Yeah, and as Ben alluded to, most of these materials are also tested on how they would hold up in harsh environments. So this environmental testing can include high heat, high humidity testing, as well as salt fog testing to validate that the conductive compound will remain, um, will maintain its mechanical adhesive strength, its electrical properties, um, obviously, we're trying to minimize galvanic corrosion when exposed to these environments without the additional protection. Uh, low temperature testing is also done to make sure materials will operate after low temperature storage and in cold environmental operation. This is important for all kinds of military applications, such as high altitude and shipboard programs. Um, and after environmental testing, the parts are all run through the same transfer impedance, shielding effectiveness, and mechanical tests, and those values are recorded.